Hello. Last week, I gave you this skeletal muscle anatomy review. And to be completely honest, it's actually a skeletal muscle kind of introduction, right? Because we haven't really gone through all of these things yet. Um, so I wanted to take you through the answers, make, you, make sure you got what you should have out of the assignment. So we talked about the difference between skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, and smooth muscle when we did tissues. Quickly, skeletal muscle has these long parallel muscle cells or muscle fibers, um, many nuclei, visible striations, these stripes are, remember, called striations, and they're voluntary. We have to tell skeletal muscle what it's going to do. We also have cardiac muscle. Cardiac muscle and skeletal muscle look similar, but there's a few difference, differences. Instead of having multiple nuclei, cardiac muscle just has one. Um, and cardiac muscle branches in a way that's very different than skeletal muscle. Um, and the last difference that we're going to talk about is that cardiac muscle is involuntary. Um, fortunately, we do not have to remember to keep our heart beating throughout the day. The third type of muscle was smooth muscle. Smooth muscle it has a um, spindle-shaped cell. It has a single nucleus. You don't see any stripes or striations here. And like cardiac muscle, thankfully, we do not have to control our smooth muscle. So those are the three types of muscle. This week, we are going to focus on skeletal muscle. So we're going to um, start looking at the big picture, looking at a whole skeletal muscle, and then going deeper and deeper until we're at the cellular level. So here we have the internal structure of a skeletal muscle. Um, and so this is kind of what we're used to thinking of a muscle looking like, right? We have the muscle belly, um, and then we have tendon, and that tendon connects the muscle to the bone. Um, when you cut into muscle, you can see kind of these different bundles, and each of these bundles is called a fascicle. Okay. Um, and the fascicles are actually made of parallel muscle fibers or parallel muscle cells. Remember, muscle cells and muscle fibers mean the same thing. So before we get deeper into the fascicle, I just wanted to talk about the connective tissue. Because when we're thinking about muscle, we think about the part that contracts. But it, the connective tissue is also very important. The entire muscle is surrounded by a connective tissue called epimysium. And as that muscle, um, as the muscle fibers thin towards the edge or end of the muscle, that epimysium continues and forms the tendon. Okay? So that is surrounding the entire muscle. Within the muscle, around these fascicles, is a connective tissue that's called paramysium. Okay, and this again is going to continue the entire length of the muscle and also forms part of the tendon. Okay, um, and so from here we're going to talk about the structure of a fascicle. And so here is the illustration that talks about the structure of the fascicle. So a fascicle is a bundle of many muscle fibers or muscle cells. So each of these kind of things is a muscle fiber or a muscle cell. Here's the paramysium, the connective tissue that surrounds the fascicle. And then surrounding each of these muscle fibers is endomysium, the connective tissue that surrounds the muscle cells. Okay. So from here, we're going to look at the muscle fiber structure, the internal muscle fiber structure. So we're going to blow up this picture, and we're going to look at this picture. So here is the muscle fiber that we saw up here, right there, um, covered with endomysium. Underneath that connective tissue, is the cell membrane. And our muscle tissue, our muscle cells have special names for the cell membrane. It's called the sarcolemma. Um, and 
along the edge of the muscle fibers, you're going to see these bumps that are the nuclei. And remember, there's more than one nucleus in a skeletal muscle cell. Um, and we're also going to see mitochondria. Okay. Um, we're used to seeing sarcoplasmic reticulum within, sorry, we're used to seeing endoplasmic reticulum within cells, um, but muscles have a special endoplasmic reticulum. It's called sarcoplasmic reticulum. You'll see sarcolemma, sarcoplasmic reticulum, sarcomere. Um, this is a prefix that goes with muscle cells. Um, so sarcoplasmic reticulum actually surrounds these fibers called myofibrils. Um, and we'll get to the myofibrils shortly, but there's just a different structure, different feel to this endoplasmic reticulum that's in the muscle. So the sarcoplasmic reticulum um, widens in these regions that are called terminal cisternae. So on either side of this green line here are the terminal cisternae of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Um, and these are going to be important when we talk about muscle contraction. The green lines are called T-tubules, and T-tubules allow for signals to be sent down the sarcolemma and deep into the muscle. Okay, and the combination of the two terminal cisternae and the T-tubule forms what's called the triad. We're gonna spend more time with this in lab um, the week after spring break. Um, but I just wanted to kind of give you the lay of the land uh, so you felt comfortable moving forward. Um, and now we're going to look at the structure of a myofibril. So a myofibril is formed of many sarcomeres lined up next to each other. Okay, A sarcomere is the contractile unit of a muscle. Okay, So this is where the contraction happens. Um, and the more sarcomeres you have along a myofibril that contract, the shorter the muscle is going to get. Okay, so these lines right here are called Z lines, and the Z lines tell us where one sarcomere ends and the next one begins. Okay, so here are the boundaries of this individual sarcomere. Within the sarcomere, we have both thin and thick filaments. The thin filaments attach to the Z-line, so here is a thin filament. And the thick filaments over here in orange attach to the M-line. Okay, so the M-line on either side has a thick filament and the Z-line has thin filaments. Okay, and these are the filaments that allow the muscle to contract. We're going to talk about how that happens in videos next week, um, but just, so, you know, this is a little foreshadowing. Uh, the other terms that you need to know is that where the thin and thick filaments overlap form this dark zone that's called the A-band. Okay, where the thin filaments end and before they begin again, so in this region, it's called the H zone. Um, and this light region on either side of the Z discs where there's only thin filaments is called the I band. So the light and dark striations we see of muscle tissue are the A band and the I band. Um, but within those bands, there are even further zones and lines. Okay, so from um, the top down, we're going to, it's the whole skeletal muscle is made of fascicles, which are made of muscle cells or muscle fibers, which are made of myofibrils, which are made of myofilaments, those thick and thin filaments. Okay. Um, so hopefully that gives you a good start uh, to what we're going to be learning this week about the muscle. So we've gone from the top down 
And now we're going to, um, in this next packet, we're going to start here and we're going to work up to a full muscle contraction. Um, and I will post all these answers. The answers continue so you can find out what all the answers are to the questions. I will post this to Moodle um, so you can check your work. Um, and I will do the same thing um, with the packets uh, for the upcoming week. Hope you have a great weekend. Thank you.